Terrorists are running a parallel government in Kaduna. El Rufai cries out. And Wike denies suing Atiku and hits PDP governors. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasser El Rufai alarmed on activities of terrorists now running a parallel government in the state, and that has been described as belated and an unfortunate admission. This is as the people of the southern Kaduna area revealed that uh, he has that the area has now become ungovernable in the state, and it's about the size of Abia State. Now, the development has now elicited fears among Nigerian leaders, northern leaders, elders, and other stakeholders who warned President Buhari of the threat to the sovereignty of the nation by bandits if any immediate end is not brought to the security challenges in Kaduna. Well, joining us to break this down is Reverend Joseph Hayab. He is the CAN chairman in Kaduna State. And we're also being joined by Roy, Ambassador Roy Hidebe. Uh, he's a security expert and consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Great. I'm going to start with you, uh, Reverend Hayab, because you and I have been on this program over and over and over talking about the issues um, of insecurity that the people in Kaduna State uh, have faced. Um, now, from the reports that we've gotten, we know that these guys had established authority, according to reports, since 2019. Let's fast forward that to 2022, and now they're governing spaces that's as big as Abia State. I'll ask the simplest of questions. Why did we wait for this expansion process to take um, action? Why are we now all of a sudden crying foul? We waited because those who raised the alarm some years ago were attacked to be enemies of government. I, speaking to you, have said this over a year ago that we have two governments in Kaduna State the government of Nasri el Rufai, and the government of the bandit or the terrorists. The fact of all is that I did say that the Kaduna people are afraid of the terrorist government than they are afraid of the government of el Rufai, because the terrorist government comes with uh, terror, they come with force, they coerce you into doing what you don't want to do, they can kill, they can maim, they can cause damage. Unfortunately, the government of Erufai was more of a propaganda, saying what was not true. At that time, the accusation was we were just not in favor or in love with government. So we were against government. We don't want government. But we are happy now that the man himself is admitting, he is saying that, yes, what these people said far back and I was denying is true. But how honest is this admission and how Honest is the core is something that we wait to see. But this has been for a long time. We saw it, we cry out about it, we complain about it, we speak out about it, we shout on the top of our voice about it. Sadly, his ears and those with him we are close, they didn't listen to us. They told we didn't know what we had said with highly prepared security people in Kaduna and outside Kaduna. And I always tell them the truth of what we know, because what we know is what we should tell security. Security is not just the business of those who have been recruited as police or SSS or school army. It is everybody's business. So our job as stakeholders is to know what is happening and to raise concern. We are not saying it because we hate government. Neither are we saying it because we are against an individual. We are simply saying that our home is in danger. And we need help. We need to do something about it. Sadly, we allow them to have grown big, to have grown and uh, institutionalized themselves, and now we are crying. I don't know how it's going to be, but it's good that we have come to reality. Let's see how we go going forward. 
Ambassador Roy, you are a security um, expert. Now, I also have spoken to, to you on issues of uh, insecurity in Kaduna State. I remember the last time we spoke, you talked about the lack of willpower and collaboration between security um, you know, agencies and the government of Kaduna State. Now that Governor El Rufai is crying out loud and saying that the, you know, the, gov the state is being overrun by this uh, terrorist, has the strategy changed? Has his body language changed? Does it seem more likely that he's open to finally, finally fighting these men off? Or is this more like a, a drowning man screaming for help? Ambassador Roy, can you hear me? I don't think he can hear me. So I'll throw that question back to you, Reverend Hayab. Yeah, uh, the truth about it is that uh, we have said this before, that our governor is a man who always wants to show he knows all. Even when he sits with security experts to discuss before they say one sentence, he has said two paragraphs. So sometimes some of them there don't, don't, don't want to have issues with him. They allow it flow and nothing happens. So this is where we are. You, as a leader, you must listen. Even if you know, you must allow the other view to come to the table. Because until you have the different views, you will not even understand and strategize very really well. And our governor seems to prefer only his voice must be heard, only his voice should be known, only his views should be taken. Sadly, the bandits know his voice, they know his view, and they understand his view cannot make any difference. So this is the situation in Kaduna State. That's why if you look at the history of Kaduna State in the past four years, so many security teams have actually been removed. Those who really feel that they want to say no to some of his view, he will just find a way of ensuring that they are out. That's why I don't subscribe when he says that he's not in charge of security. But you run to Abuja every day to start or to get the other person who disagree with you to be removed. So if you are not in charge, then listen to the people who are advising. Because when you meet with security council, listen to them. There was a time he called the religious leaders all together to a meeting, and one of our bishops just wanted to draw his attention to the things happening around. He shouted on him. He just watched the man in that public uh, gathering and make no sense of the man. So you see, if any other person has another information he wants to give, he's not going to speak because he knows that he's going to be react or the reaction from the governor will not be favorable. It is always people don't know, only everybody that knows. And that's why we are where we are today. Okay. Um, you, uh, Kaduna Khan has been quoted to say that um, the government has been defending terrorists. That's a very weighty st statement when in the midst of, you know, a situation as severe as bandits or terrorists overrunning your, your state. Um, saying that the government has been defending them, what exactly did you mean by that? I mean, it does have consequences. Well, there are many reasons why we said that. Number one, when we started crying for because our people are being killed, uh, at that time they were not called terrorists, we just called them uh, unknown gunmen or hired killers. The governor came out in a public television and said, and I quote, that look, he actually followed them even to some of the neighboring countries and gave them money. I remember he was speaking to the interviewer that day and was saying that, look, giving them money was the best option. If people have another option they should give, let them tell him. But he believes that giving them money will stop the killing. Sadly, giving them money armed them to get more weapons. And today they are outrunning the country or the state. Not only by that. As many times that the not say people have come out to cry out. I remember when the killings were going on in Brindan Valley and the stakeholders in Brindan Valley cried out. He called them enemies of the state. He called them even people who have been paid and sponsored by PDP. Because anytime you tell the governor that he is, things are not going well in your community, you are now a PDP person. I know personally as Reverend Hayam, he has sat on the many national televisions and radios to say that I'm being sponsored by PDP. I can't even imagine how I will be sponsored when my people are being killed. I'm talking about the lives of citizens of Kaduna State, the lives of the people I represent, and you are tagging me with a political party just because you want to rubbish any sensible uh, complaint. So if he is not speaking for the bandits, why is he attacking people who are raising concern about the issues? You see, we do believe that security is the job of everybody. We see things and we need to say it to security agencies. There was a time one of the commissioner of police was asked by him, or he asked the commissioner to 
invited me over. I don't know the right translation. He gathered all the other security team. And he was shouting on us as if he was speaking to his babies. Mm -hmm. I listened to him, and after saying everything, I gave him details of everything that I know. I remember that his public relations officer was the one who said, my commissioner, it is important we listen to these people because they are nearer the we do, and they know about the crime more than crime we know. There are crimes they know about that we don't know. If we fail to listen to them, then we'll be making mistakes. That was how can you, as a governor, do like that? And then I don't call you speaking for the bandits. Remember, just a night to the election in 2019, when there was killing in Kaju, a governor who's supposed to protect his citizens, who's supposed to speak to him about the police, came out and was even accusing a particular group, a particular tribe, or a particular religion of killing others, and even gave a number that the commissioner of police later refuted and said he is not aware of the number. If he is not speaking for the bandits or the terrorists, why will he be saying that? So he was, he has been governing us by dividing and ruling, by, by creating unnecessary tension among us. Unfortunately for him, we have to find a way of relating with the planet for them to know that the killing is about humanity, is not about tribe. The killing is about people, is not about religion. So we must work together to stop it. And that's why we feel he has been defending the bandits. He's supposed to come out and tell the bandit that if anybody in my state is killed, I will come after you. But when you start blaming other people, either a tribe or a religion or any form of identity, then you are actually protecting the bandit. And the bandit may feel, wait a minute, we thought these people would be coming after us for us to run, but he's really fighting those who are telling him that we exist. So what is his job? A new PR. I'm, I'm curious as to why your insistent that he's babying these bandits. I mean, we all saw the BBC um, documentary, which raised an uproar, that is saying that at the, at the core of these killings is an ethnic war of sorts. And this can be dated back to as, as old as old can be. But in the interim, um, what is CAN doing as collaborative efforts with security agencies, civil society, because again, you made mention of something that I wanted to query earlier on, that the governor is a know-it-all governor, in your words. And if that know-it-all, um, according to you, does not necessarily work or is not working, what are you, the other concerned people in Kaduna State, uh, doing to put an end to this? There are a lot of people in Kaduna State that are worried about the happenings. Efforts are being made from different quarters to see that this insecurity is addressed. But you see, there is a limit to what the NGOs will do. Most time we at the NGO, those of us who get involved with NGOs, are talking to the community. We are talking to the victims. We, we don't have what it takes to go after the terrorists. So you see, what we thought would have happened is that when we are calling the community to unite, when we are calling the community not to give space for the bandits or terrorists to operate, then the government will go after the terrorists and the terrorists will be at run. Unfortunately, when you are speaking to the government and drawing their attention to the things happening around, the government is not going after the terrorists, it's busy trying to interpret what you mean and who you belong or what you belong. That's why people are saying what you had me say. The simple truth is our governor is good at twisting every reasonable conversation to make it look as it does not exist. He was the same person who felt that these people are supposed to be protected. Sadly, when they started coming after him, coming after a uh, military and government institution, then he said that they should be bombed. And some of us asked this question. If when we call on you, when they started, they had not grown big, they were not, they do, have not established as the way they are now. If the government of Katana State through the security agencies have gone after them that time, they wouldn't have had the strength to be terrorizing the state the way they are doing. But sadly, that, that time he was engaging all of us in the war of wars. And the terrorists fell, wait a minute, let them keep talking, we will be doing the evil we're supposed to do. Now that they have threatened that they are going to kidnap him, and they are also going to kidnap the president, I believe that's, what, that's the wake-up call that is making all these new stories they are hearing. Because now it is no longer about the common man, it is no longer about Khan or those people who also couple, it is about him. That shouldn't be. Leadership is about the people. Let's talk about inflammatory statements and very sensitive ones that have been making headlines. Uh, of course, um, the governor, this mo I think this morning, 
put out a tweet um, in response to a Peter Albi one million man march in Kaduna State, and he he scoffed at the the people, saying that um, can they? That, I mean, I think he was saying can they can they even open their shops on Monday, and he can bet how that they would not be up to a thousand, you know, on that march. Again, like you, um, I said earlier on, Khan had been quoted to say that the government was defending terrorists. Let's look at peace strategies, peaceful strategies now. If these sensitive statements continue to make headlines and these kinds of words are being used, are we not fueling the crisis as opposed to dousing the tension? I'm happy that you noticed that, but because he is speaking about a political party and a political candidate, I think as Khan, I don't need to talk about that. If the party feels that what well, he, he said is not make them, reference, he did make reference loosely. I'm sorry, I'm, Bishop, I'm sorry, in, Reverend Hayab, I'm so sorry. He he did make yes. reference I loosely. Agree that that's I'm sorry, can you hear me, Reverend Hayab? Because it is he made reference. Political party. I don't want to comment about it. I want, I'd like to co co correct something. He did make reference loosely to a particular tribe. Um, and I do not want to use the same word that he used, but he did speak about a particular tribe. And those people are mostly known as traders in Kaduna State, um, attaching them to the party. This is why I was asking that question. Can you hear me, Reverend? I understand very well what you mean, and I'm just simply saying that because it's for Christians, I speak for Christian faithful. If he speaks about Christians, I will give him the appropriate response. That tribe listening to him, they read what he said. I hope they will react and respond accordingly. But this is also to confirm to you that what we've been saying, that our governor lacks courtesy when it comes to speech. Our governor speaks and do not care whether he speaks will steer the nation. He just say what he wants to say. If you say similar word like him, then he will call the police or the security to come after you. About a month ago, I just said that Kaduna is no longer safe. When two priests were kidnapped and one of them was killed, I started getting some invitation from security agencies as if I've said anything that is new. Kaduna is not safe. People are hiding every day. People cannot travel freely. So these are the issues we are calling on government to do what is right because one of the constitutional, the most important constitutional responsibility of government is to secure lives and properties. Once you do that, you don't need to do anything to me. I will live my life. I will so good to survive. But once there is insecurity, how can I go to my farm? How can my children go to school and government to act responsibly when there is security breach? Finally, Reverend, before I let you go, um, uh, can we say that the federal government has failed um, the Nigerian people, especially the Kaduna state people and even other states around your region? Uh, in terms of fighting corruption. I'm asking this question because the Buhari administration came into power on the heels or on the wings of fighting corruption, fighting Boko Haram and putting an end to unemployment. Uh, but let's stay with the um, Boko Haram situation and, of course, terrorism. Um, can we say that in the almost eight years of President Buhari uh, that any justice has been done in terms of fighting terrorism? The fact about it is that if there is any grip that is lower than F9, I will give it to them because they have done poorly in that regard. Every day what this government specializes in doing is rhetoric without concrete action. I earlier today listened to the um, National Security Advisor, the usual story. You are telling us that we, have, we need to work together. We have offered to help. We have offered to collaborate. We have offered to see that this country is secure. But you will not accept any other help from anywhere. But you go to the television and tell people that security is everybody's business. Well, in reality, you are not willing to help everybody. Look, I do say this, that instead of calling some young men who don't even know what it means to secure themselves and call them civilian JTF, we have a lot of military, retired military men in Nigeria. Have this government honestly engage them and ask them we can... Can you help us? He put them on some kind of insurance, pay them good uh, uh, allowance, 
and encourage them to grow. They know what it takes to go to the bush. Some of them fought in the war. They have experience of guerrilla warfare. They have so many experiences that they can bring to bear to secure this country. When nobody is engaging them, you hear millions of naira being spent every day for security, and people are still dying. So this government knows that she has done poorly, terribly poor when it comes to securing Nigerians. And Nigerians are really, really, really living in fear in this past, especially in the last four years. Well, Reverend Joseph Hayab is the CAN chairman for Kaduna State. Uh, we want to thank you so much for speaking with us. Apologies, we lost uh, Roy Ohidieve uh, while we were having that conversation. Thank you once again, Reverend. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, it's good to have you stay with us. We'll take a quick break when we return. We'll be discussing the Atiku Wiki reconciliation moves. And of course, recently, Governor Wiki has denied suing Atiku and the PDP. We'll be right back after this break.